gave it back. Omar ibn Abdulaziz gave it back to Ahlul Bayt during his caliphate. Now, according to the Shiites, Ahlul Bayt is only Ali Hassan Hussein Fatima. As for Aisha and Hafsa, Umm Salama, they are not from the Prophet's family. Now, this aqidah of theirs is absolutely ridiculous. If you are married to a woman, does she belong to your family? Yes or no? Yes. How do we know that in Islam, if you are married to a woman, she is of your family? When you die, she inherits a quarter of your property. If she wasn't from your family, why is it that Allah designated, Allah has allotted for your wife a quarter of your property? Because she's of your family. And if you have children, Allah said you give her one-eighth of your property. One-eighth. Why? Because she's of your family. And one day people were saying bad things about the Prophet's family. And he covered Hassan and Hussein and Fatima underneath a sheet and make a dua. And said, oh Allah, let them be protected from the tongues of men. Protect my family. Umm Salama was standing there and she said, what about me? And the Prophet said, and you. So the Prophet said to Umm Salama, and you. Why he pointed to Umm Salama and said, and you? Because Umm Salama, who was his wife, is also a member of his family. When Uthman was the caliph, Abdurrahman bin Auf divorced one of his wives because he was on his deathbed and he didn't want her to inherit. He divorced, he pronounced divorce on her when he was on his deathbed because he didn't want her to inherit from him. And as soon as he died, Uthman still override what he did and allow her to inherit. Why? Because your wife is of your family. To say that Fatima, Omar slammed the door in his face and caused her to lose her pregnancy. And she died as a result. And Ali did not do anything. You are saying that Ali was a weak man. Ali, radiallahu anhu, at no time in history, he was proven to be a weak man. They said, the Shiites, that Abu Bakr and Omar usurped the caliphate from Ali. They didn't even attend the janazah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They didn't have any time to attend the janazah. Why? Because they were busy robbing Ali of the caliphate. They didn't even attend the janazah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We refute that. The janazah of the Rasul was done at different times by different people. So how can you say they didn't, didn't attend his janazah? Many janazah of the Rasul was done in Medina by different people, different sahabas at different times. They have a book called Al-Kafi. Al-Kafi, the author is called Khulaini. 95% of the hadith in Al-Kafi are fabricated hadith. They claim in, that in Al-Kafi, one of the hadith in Al-Kafi, Ali hold on to the hand of Abu Bakr. And showed him his destiny in the hellfire. Now how do you refute this? This is very easy to refute. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was migrating from Mecca to Medina, he migrated with Abu Bakr as siddiq They hid in a cave. And the kuffar, they closed in on the cave. They were searching for them to arrest them or kill them. Abu Bakr as siddiq said to Rasul, if only the... If only they look carefully, they'll find us. They are closing in on the cave. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, La tahzan, inna allaha ma'ana. Don't be afraid, Allah is with us. Allah Ta'ala spoke about this incident in Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, verse 40. Allah Ta'ala said, Idhuma fil ghar. Both of them were in the cave. إِذْ li sahibihi. He, the Rasul said to his Sahaba, لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا Don't be afraid, Allah is with us. So in Surah Tawbah, verse 40, Allah Ta'ala pronounced Abu Bakr as Sahaba. Allah gave him the rubber stamp of approval of being a Sahaba. So when you, the Shia, said he was a kafir, and Ali showed him his destiny in the hellfire. 
What you're saying is, Allah called him a sahaba in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, but we don't see him as a sahaba. So what they are trying to do, they are trying to veto Allah. Anybody who veto Allah is a kafir outside the fold of Islam. And I will tell you on another occasion how the Shiites veto Allah. When they make takfir on the sahabas, it has grave implications. The following implications. It means that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam failed miserably as a murabbi. A murabbi is a person who gives you proper Islamic upbringing, proper Islamic training, proper Islamic orientation. That's a murabbi. A person, you live with him and you learn from his character. How he eats, how he sleeps, how he drinks. You learn from his mannerism. And you emulate him, you copy him until you become beautifully decorated in your character like your murabbi. For example, in this masjid, your murabbi is your sheikh. You look at his character and you copy him. That's your murabbi. Because people don't have time to go to books and read. So how do they learn their deen? From their sheikhs. Their molanas. And any man whose book is his sheikh, the shaitan becomes his sheikh. Any man who has no sheikh, no murabbi, the shaitan becomes his murabbi. You need a live person to look at, to copy, to emulate, in order to learn your deen. And when you don't understand a hadith or an ayah, you go to your murabbi to give you the tafsir of the ayah. So when you make takfir on the sahabas, you are claiming that the prophet failed as a murabbi. Secondly, the sahabas compiled the Quran. Who compiled the Quran in the Quraysh dialect? Which sahaba? Which caliph? Who can tell me? Lauda? Uthman. By you casting doubt on the character of the sahabas, you are actually casting doubt on the Quran itself. The authenticity of the Quran. This is why Shiites believe the Quran has been tampered with. The Quran has been changed. The Shiites, they are going for the juggler vein to destroy Islam. Your greatest scholars and sheikhs, or the Sahabas, they taught you how the Prophet walked, how he talked, which foot he entered the masjid with, which foot he entered the toilet with, which hand he used to eat with, whether it's the right hand or the left hand. The Sahabas are your greatest scholars. They taught you Islam. They compiled the Quran for you. They compiled the Hadith for you. In other words, the compilation of the Hadith, they relate to you what the Prophet said in his Hadith. That's what I meant when I said they compiled the Hadith for you. They taught you Hadith. That's what I meant. The first compilation of Hadith was done by the mortar of Imam Malik. They taught you Hadith. So if you succeed in assassinating the character of the Sahabas, what have you done to Islam? You have destroyed Islam. The character of the Sahabas is so important. Allah taught you in the Quran to make a dua. Rabbana khfirlana wa li ikhwanina aladhina sabakuna bil iman wa la taj'al fi qlubina ghilla liladhina amanu Rabbana inna karufur rahim Allah taught you to make this dua. Oh Allah forgive those who came before us. Rabbana khfirlana our ikhwan, our brothers who came before us. And do not put in our hearts any rancor, hatred, resentment to them, our brothers who came before us. This dua is to make you love the Sahabas. Allah said, Radi Allahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. The Prophet said, La tasubbu ahadan min ashabi. Follow anfaqa ahadukum mithla uhudin dhahaban. Ma adraka mudda ahadihim. Wala nasif. Do not insult any of my sahabas. Because if any one of you should spend as much as Mount Uhud in gold, it will never measure up to the sacrifice of my sahabas, not even half of it. These Shiites are so stupid, they don't realize when you insult the sahabas, you are insulting the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, Because you are saying he was not a good judge of character, he chose hypocrites and kafirs to be his companions. They are so stupid. They do not realize when you make takfir and Abu Bakr, you are trying to veto Allah. You are trying to veto Surah Tawbah verse 40 where Allah mentioned him as a Sahaba. They are so stupid. They don't realize when they insult the Sahabas, they are insulting Ali. They claim they love Ali. They are insulting Ali because Ali 
What did he do? He gave his bay'ah to Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman. So you are trying to say Ali gave his bay'ah to kafirs. Ali, who you claim you love Ali. What did Ali do? He gave his bay'ah, his oath of allegiance to Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman. So you are trying to say that he gave his bay'ah to kafirs. One day Abu Hanifa had a debate with Shiites. He picked up his shoes. He didn't leave them outside the masjid, at the door. He picked it up. The Shia said, Abu Hanifa, why did you pick up your shoes? He, he said, because in the time of the Prophet, the Shiites used to steal the shoes of other Muslims. The Shiites said to Abu Hanifa, you're a liar. In the time of the Prophet, there was no Shiites. Abu Hanifa said to them, this has defeated your purpose, your cause. You are a newly invented.